Welcome to World War II Chronicles, a weekly tribute to America's fighting men and women in commemoration of the Second World War. These programs are narrated by Ed Herlihy and are based on the news broadcasts of the war period from the recorded sound collection of the National Archives in Washington, D.C. Key to the American war effort was the close relationship between labor and business. Yet friction continued. Although strikes had dropped sharply because of patriotism and steady wages, after years of depression and uncertainty, by 1943, workers were again resorting to the picket line. In Alameda, California, naval construction and repair work was halted at the General Engineering and Dry Dock Company by a work stoppage of CIO machinists. One after another, the coal mines are closing down. Around 75,000 miners are already on strike. And if they are not back at work by 10 o'clock Saturday morning, the president will step in as commander-in-chief and take charge of the situation. Coal miners, led by United Mine Workers President John L. Lewis, caused most of the labor troubles of 1943. In late April, Lewis's union struck, closing 3,000 coal mines across the country. The government seized the mines on April 29th. The War Labor Board answered John L. Lewis's boycott today by asking President Roosevelt to prevent a nationwide strike in the soft coal mines at midnight Friday. I believe the coal miners will not continue the strike against their government. Tomorrow, the stars and stripes will fly over the coal mines, and I hope that every miner will be at work under that flag. This was the first of four walkouts by coal miners, who eventually received most of their demands. The War Labor Board denied the miners' request for a $2 a day basic wage increase, but there were concessions in the ruling. The board endorsed the portal-to-portal -portal issue, sending it back to labor and management, telling them to work something out on that basis. The strike so angered the American public that Congress passed the Smith-Connolly Bill, which made instigating a strike in military-related plants a crime. The Senate has passed the Connolly No-Strike Bill, 63 to 16. The bill specifically empowers the government to seize and operate essential mines and plants tied up by labor disputes. I'm Ed Hurley. Join me next time for World War II Chronicles. World War II Chronicles was produced by the American Veterans Center and Radio America in cooperation with the National Archives. To listen to more episodes, subscribe on iTunes or visit AmericanVeteransCenter.org. We need your help to keep the legacy of our World War II generation alive. Visit AmericanVeteransCenter.org to make a donation to support World War II Chronicles and the ongoing work of the American Veterans Center.